Hey friends, it's Anjali here. It's Tuesday, July 27th. Welcome to the Missions Changed My Life show by Global Hope India with your host Kevin White. This is the podcast where we say yes to God's call to go make Christ known in India and around the world. On Friday, August 6th, Kevin will be sharing part 2 of a powerful message from God's word entitled God guides God provides. God guides God provides. I hope you'll join us for this international live broadcast from the USA via Zoom, YouTube, or Facebook at 10 a.m. Eastern time on Friday, August 6th. Details at kevinwhite.us. We'll see you there. Okay. Now here's your host, Kevin White. I am so grateful to have our partner from Pune, India, Pastor Pagam on the call today. Welcome to Missions Change My Life. Thank you for your partner update. How are you, Pastor? Yes, I'm good. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Pastor Gavin. Yeah. Well, it's good to catch up with you. Uh it's been over a year since we've been able to be in India, and we miss you. We miss your family. We miss your church. But how are you and your family? and your church now yeah by the grace of god we are all uh, uh doing good doing mm-hmm. good the church is uh, also uh uh doing uh, the church is also uh uh okay okay yeah well there yeah, you the have faced many ch- many changes and many challenges i'll just give a brief update to our audience uh there in pune in india is uh naga christian fellowship and uh pastor is the pastor of that church and uh there has at times been over a thousand people uh living from northeast india from all across northeast india living in pune that would consider uh ncf to be their church home and hundreds would gather for worship every sunday morning and uh for over 15 years you you've not had your own land your own building uh you have shared a variety of spaces but before the pandemic you were you were using a catholic church uh there in pune inside the city and um and and i've been able to worship with you many times and even preach several times and it's been a great honor to know you and to be a part of that but your church is run by volunteers you and only a handful of people were paid staff and um there were there were many volunteers um that were small group leaders and sunday school teachers and elders and the uh team leaders on and on and on uh very wo- yeah. well organized um uh church and body and ministry and uh and so then when the pandemic hit uh there was a variety of shutdowns that even continued even through n- today we're recording this in the summer of 2021 and there's even shutdowns uh still now but um but you you had to you had to stop in person meetings and go online what was that transition like for your church it was uh yeah like you say we used to have hundreds of leaders volunteers to run the church and uh, it used to be very uh, interesting and church uh, had been vibrant and uh, things were going very well but the uh, pandemic uh, has hit us hard and then now as uh, most of you know very less or very few number of uh, us are here in the city mm-hmm. and so uh in the beginning things were very challenging but by the grace of god we are now picking up and uh we have right now four full time staff uh so my uh, associate pastor and pastoral intern and sunday school coordinator they are very supportive and they are very efficient they are wonderful uh, uh people so uh things are getting better now it took some time for us to get used to this kind of uh situation yes. yeah yeah i'm sure you never imagined uh being pastor 
that you would go from preaching to helping people find transportation back to Northeast. Hundreds of your, of your fellow uh, citizens from Northeast India uh, needed to abandon Pune. Um, and I'll just give a brief history to our audience. There, you've heard about it probably on the global news, but uh, the factory shut down. And during the, during the quarantine, uh, when it first began, there was a radical shutdown by the Indian government. Um, restaurants were affected, hotels were affected, and all of these service, service personnel from, um, from across India were, were uh, immediately unemployed and they had to go over to, um, to go back to their villages to find a place to survive and to grow their own gardens and, and to be in a place of safety and refuge. And, and uh, Pune is um, hundreds of kilometers away from their birth locations. And so they all had to um, to make multiple trains, multiple planes, uh, trips up to Northeast India. And so would, what percentage of your congregation actually relocated as a result of COVID-19? More than 50%? More than 50%. I More than 75%? 75% at least. Okay. Yes. Wow. Wow. And so the seminary is a big draw for the Northeast population and jobs are a big draw. And when the seminary closed and jobs uh, closed, there was nothing to sustain um, these, these um, people that had come in from Northeast. And so their only livelihood chance for survival was to somehow, some way, get a train ticket, get a plane ticket and get home. And that did not just happen in 24 hours. Um, if you're in the USA, you can, you can even, in the, even in the worst day of, the, of the, the quarantine and the shutdown, we could still get around the USA. And the USA is three times bigger than the land mass of India. And the USA has one fourth of the population of India. And so even in our worst day, we could get from New York to LA in uh, a one day period, but that was not the case in India. Even though it was a lot shorter distance, it took many days by train and even by plane to, to get hundreds of people back to their birth place. And you pastor were, were, were really um, providing practical care in that, um, helping, helping people to get even to the train station and everything. You, I remember there were weeks you probably only slept a few hours a day, if, if even that, because you just stay constantly busy helping people relocate. Very true, very true. It was a, a big privilege for us to serve the people and then um, things were uh, not very easy, but uh, it was easier because of the mm -hmm. support from the partners like uh, GHI and uh, Naga Students Union, Pune uh, leaders. Mm -hmm. They worked very hard and uh, some volunteers who were, uh, who volunteered to stay back despite the mm -hmm. difficult situation they were going through. So with the support of a uh, few people, uh, we managed to help whatever we could, uh, uh, whatever we uh, wanted to do to our people returning home. And it was not just uh, the Nagas, but uh, we tried our best to give or to extend our help to uh, anyone going from Pune yeah. to any parts of India. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, the migrant workers, the students, and uh, working youth who lost their jobs, uh, and many other people who left home, we tried to help them uh, with whatever we had in our hands and whatever got provided uh, to us. Yeah, so, this was in April and May of 2020, pastors just describing the migrant workers across mainland India were literally walking. Uh, at the time that the government shut everything down, it included national transportation. 
And it took weeks before trains were even allowed to move to take the Northeastern uh, population back to their home. And uh, planes were even able to be coordinated. But the local taxis, the buses were, were halted. And so hundreds of thousands, millions of migrant workers were, um, were, were forced to walk hundreds of kilometers back to their birthplace. And so Pastor was just describing that uh, Global Hope India and others were able to help with grocery packets and water packets and different things to just provide some comfort and the name of Jesus uh, to those uh, people that, that were suffering. Babies were born out on the road because they were in the, in the middle of transitioning and had no other place to be born. And even unfortunately, people died right there on the, on the side of the road because of heat stroke, uh, April and May, the hottest months in India. Um, and, and it was just a miserable situation. And that was only like the first wave of misery. There's been another wave um, since 2021 where um, the, the number of positive cases just overwhelmed all the hospitals, people were dying, the crematoriums were jammed, and we, we um, just have been helpless to do a whole lot other than pray uh, for you, pastor, and for your church, but thankful along the way that you're there, you're, you're really being a tangible expression that God is an ever-present help in time of need, and you're just remaining faithful with whatever he puts into your hands. And you don't stop. You don't give up. It would have been very understandable if you would have just said, we're going to close NCF right now and we're going to go to our homes and we're going to pray and we're not going to go out into the city. But you just continuously went out and uh, and served your people and served the community and tried to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And I just commend you and your church for that. So if we came today and flew into Pune, what would we find as far as Naga Christian Fellowship? You're still not meeting in person, but you are worshiping via Zoom? Yes, we are worshiping via Zoom, and, and uh, like the old days, like mm -hmm. the uh, normal days we had, we have started uh, gathering in good number, worshiping in good number via Zoom. And then uh, members from uh, around the world, mm -hmm. uh, especially the alumni of uh, NCF Pune and uh, the present associate members or uh, temporary members or permanent members who are in their own places, they all join us. Mm -hmm. So our gathering is uh, uh, actually uh, the numbers of worshipers or worship numbers of uh, attending the Sunday services have become more uh, within this few um, weeks time. Good. We actually started um, with the pre-recorded uh, worship services mm -hmm. for some months and we came to realize that it was uh, becoming very monotonous and people were uh, disconnected. So we thought Zoom, uh, meetings via Zoom will be better and then it was God actually speaking the, through the leadership. And then we implemented that idea. And now we are getting started all over again. It's mm. a wonderful feeling to see each other uh, in the real time, not mm. just watching the video that is recorded, but uh, right. participating uh, live. So mm -hmm. this is a wonderful thing. And uh, this were never actually, uh, these things were never in my mind. I didn't even know what was Zoom before, what was Google Meet or anything like that. But the pandemic in one way has brought some uh, knowledge or some uh, blessings as well, despite the difficulties we face. Mm. Yes. Praise, praise God. Hey, it's Anjali. We will be right back. Kevin White is an international speaker and best-selling author who loves helping people everywhere to prosper in God's presence. A serial entrepreneur, Kevin has helped start hundreds of businesses, non-profits and churches. As founder and executive director of Global Hope India, Kevin has travelled over 1 million miles 
to 27 different countries, speaking to thousands of audiences throughout India and the world. Visit KevinWhite.us for Kevin's books, one-minute motivation series and podcasts. Visit KevinWhite.us today. For over 20 years, Global Hope India has been empowering the church in India as they make Christ known. Visit GlobalHopeIndia.org and learn how you can pray, give and go. Over 1,000 people have served on one of GHI's short-term mission trips to India. Now you can join a virtual mission team to India. Visit GlobalHopeIndia.org today because everyone should have access to hear about Jesus. Okay, now back to the show. So you were known for a huge children's ministry, the Sunday school uh, there. Um, any Sunday school happening right now? Yes, we, the Sunday school students actually have uh, the number of the Sunday school students increased. Okay, uh, wow. During the pandemic. Okay. Because uh, we can connect from anywhere uh, mm -hmm. via Zoom. That's why the number of Sunday school increased. Although you do not see uh, people in the city, uh, you know that they are there and they are very much into uh, God thing. They want to learn about God. They want to worship together. So, um, of course, uh, the feeling of uh, uh, being in person with one another or physically meeting, it, it can never be replaced. Mm -hmm. But the members have really... Uh, uh, tried and are trying to keep connected and in terms of our of course sunday services you will not see the number as big as we were before when right. uh, we were in the good times mm -hmm. but uh, we are glad to uh, let you also know that at least uh, 50 to 60 people are gathered uh, mm -hmm. every sunday service mm -hmm. yeah. yeah for every single service yeah Thank have you. your home groups continued to meet during the pandemic uh we tried to do that through the student leaders mm -hmm. but it was a uh, little difficult we had uh, sure. actually uh, 10 cell groups which was reduced to nine cell groups and then later we have also uh, come to know that it is difficult for us because the leaders are also not here in the city. So we have reduced to now just five uh, cell group um, uh, cell groups now instead mm -hmm. of nine cell groups. Mm -hmm. So it is also uh, still continuing despite some difficulty we face. Mm. Okay. Yes. So you've had a variety of pastoral care, helping your people get back to their homes, um, even ministering to people in the hospital because of COVID and even deaths as a result of COVID. What has pastoral care been like most recently in the last month? Are you still going out? You getting calls regularly? Uh, not these days. The situation has become better for us. Okay. And um, uh, of course, even during the uh, pandemic we mm -hmm. were not expected to come uh, many people understood but the, most of the time we i had to minister through phone uh, unless they require me to come uh, mm -hmm. through phone call or through uh, zoom uh, or uh, through this a whatsapp video call and sometimes we used to when we are busy uh, running around for some important arrangement or mm -hmm. emergency uh, in uh, emergency cases we used to i used to record the video and then um, ask the members to join with me praying for that particular person who is in need of a, a oxygen concentrator or um, uh, some some other help or even to pray for the uh, hospital bed because uh, hospitals were all the a full and mm -hmm. it was hard for the mm -hmm. members a few of our members who were uh, infected with covid to get uh, hospital beds as well mm -hmm. but by the grace of god uh, god was really good to us and we somehow managed after some struggles sure so yeah true mostly i have done the ministry through this uh, virtual and uh, of course telephone calls and 
uh, things like that, especially for those who are sick. Once mm -hmm. they start recovering, they uh, allow or they invite me to come and pray for them. We went and sometimes they just uh, tell me to stand outside their door. Mm -hmm. They are inside their home. So mm -hmm. I come, they open the door and we see each other. We mm -hmm. pray for one another and mm -hmm. uh, I would uh, go back home. Mm -hmm. This is how we manage, especially wow. during the uh, pandemic. Yeah. 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 Wow. So um, a lot of perseverance is what I'm hearing and just steadfast love of the Lord through you to the people in need. Um, how are things today in Pune? Is there still a shutdown or schools in session? Are they only online? What's happening in Pune right now? Right now, the stores are all open. Okay. And uh, of course, uh, there's a time uh, limit. We, we are asked to uh, close the stores and the offices by at least five or uh, by, by four so that we can reach home by five. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the people are uh, keeping, but uh, of course some are not. And police have to come and intervene. Uh, but beside this, uh, all the stores are open and then uh, except for, yes, schools are not open yet. It is still going uh, online, and then worship places are also not uh, allowed to open uh, so far. But apart mm -hmm. from this, uh, all these, uh, uh, especially the essentials, are all easily available. It is all okay. open. Yes, good. thank you. Good, good. And uh, for our friends in America and other countries that did not have such extreme shutdowns, um, we had a very brief moment of crisis where all the toilet paper got bought and a couple of things like that. But uh, in India, there have been times where there was a, an, uh, a complete lockdown for more than a week. No milk, no bread, no eggs. Um, you would, you, you would um, just have to make do with what you, whatever you had because the morning you would wake up and the government would say no one is allowed out of their house. Um, that's never happened in America all during this time, but it, it became necessary and, um, and a reality for friends in India. And um, so it's, it's actually good news to hear that, that they can now access the essentials uh, that, that they need. So pastor, how can we pray? for you and for NCF today? Yes, um, when it comes to praying for NCF, we are praying for a new pastor to come and then take over the uh, responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, kindly uh, continue to pray for uh, that concern because yes. uh, my family is preparing to go uh, if God willing, we want to go back home uh, coming here in the month of July and then mm -hmm. take care of uh, my mother, who is very old now in her last days. She mm -hmm. is uh, every day. She keeps on inquiring when we are coming home. Mm -hmm. So this is the situation we have. And uh, by God's grace, uh, we are we will be completing our five years, uh, one one term or one dinner. Yeah. Uh, coming here uh, mm -hmm. in the month of July. So mm -hmm. this is one thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know God provides and God will provide. But uh, according to the finance uh, team report, our expenditures have uh, uh, remained almost the same. But, uh, the, but the income uh, has been the lower, quite lower. That's what they have reported, but mm -hmm. we still hope that God will provide us. So uh, please remember us in your prayers as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are many uh, leaders who are uh, still very active uh, working, um, still uh, very active in the, in the church activities because mm -hmm. uh, things are happening online. But there are also leaders who are not able to function 
especially like uh, I mentioned about the uh, uh, cell groups cannot uh, function as it was before. And uh, like the ushering task group, we have 14 task groups. So mm -hmm. some task groups are not able to function because they, their role uh, becomes very important when we meet in person, mm -hmm. like uh, ushering task group, like a maintenance task group, and then the hospitality task group. So uh, for them, they want to really get started and serve the Lord through NCF, but they are not able to function. Mm -hmm. Please continue to pray that uh, the situation will become uh, better and they will mm -hmm. be all back to the city and start uh, serving the Lord as they really want to serve. This is also one concern. And uh, as you all know, we have been praying for a small uh, uh, plot of land where we want to build uh, one day uh, our church. Uh, so a, a church building. So please continue to pray for the uh, church building project as well mm -hmm. because we have not materialized we come very close to uh, buying a land but uh, something or the other happens and then the lockdown comes and that's how the, our progress has been always uh, hindered so mm -hmm. please pray that god will open the way for us uh, very soon yeah mm -hmm. thank you yeah yeah well we're going to spend some time praying over these request um, before we dis before we end the program but I wanted to just hear from you how can we our, our our core values at Global Hope India is to pray give go and we are certainly praying but how can we give right now um, we've been able to help with vaccines and with some grocery packets um, and I just want to encourage everyone in the audience if God has blessed you and you have been um, your heart pricked by God during this episode, and you would like to, you can go to our give page and you can find Pune there and you can give to NCF right through globalhopeindia.org forward slash give, and we can get that to pastor and to the church there in Pune. Uh, as you just heard, they are in need even now for their, their daily operations. Their income is much less um, because so many, when he said 75% have now relocated, that means 75% are unemployed. And so the unemployment rate in that congregation is just extremely high at this moment. Uh, we're believing for healing in India. We're believing for jobs to come back and, and for everyone to be able to uh, transfer safely and move around again safely. Um, if you're in the USA, thank God for your vaccine. There's over a billion people that need vaccines in India. Um, and slowly, very, very slowly, the, the supply of vaccines are beginning to come uh, into the corners and the streets of India. But the population is so much greater than in the U.S., and you saw the difficulty to even vaccinate even half of the adult population in the U.S., and, we, and India represents four times that. And so um, with very little supply right now on hand of vaccines, the Indian government's promising to pick up production. The world is even responding, but we're, we're talking about a situation that's not going to take uh, a week or two to resolve. It's going to take probably a year or more to resolve. And so in the meantime, our brothers and sisters are in need. And so let's give uh, what, what the Lord puts into our hands to give. Let's help out. It costs $20 uh, for a vaccine. You, there are some areas where the governments are providing free vaccines, but those supplies are, are gone. And millions of people are on those waiting lists. And so in order for, for a person uh, to get a vaccine, and most of India, they're having to pay $20 to the pharmacies and, and the clinics for that. And so $20 can save a life. It can provide the vaccine, uh, a grocery kit, a whole month um, for of rice and, and oil and things it could easily cost $20. But pastor and his church will take whatever we are able to put into their hands and use it for 
the upbuilding of God's kingdom for the advancement of the gospel, to be the hands and feet of Jesus and, and to just represent God as an ever-present um, help in time of need. And so, um, Pastor, anything else you want to add about, about the area of giving before we pray? Yes, thank you for giving me this time. I want to inform you, the Global Hope of India, as uh, this very important uh, uh, thing, 69 members, 69 NCF members got vaccinated because of the fund you sent. Ah, Actually, praise God. Initially, we thought uh, we will be able to manage only 50 people, but by the grace of God, for um, around uh, 40, 44 people, we got one, vac uh, one vaccine uh, for 1,000. Mm -hmm. And for five people, we had to spend 1,400. Mm -hmm. So uh, many of us, including my family, we were waiting nearly uh, two months and we never got the slot. So uh, we thought our wait would never end, but uh, the fun coming from... Uh, Global Hub of India, we managed to get vaccinated last uh, 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 last month. Mm -hmm. And the first vaccination tribe, we managed to get vaccinated 49 members. And in the second, we managed uh, to get vaccinated uh, uh, 20 people. So mm -hmm. it makes uh, 69 members got vaccinated. So thank you so much to Global Hub of India and all the donors. May God mm -hmm. bless you in return. Amen. Amen. And I just ask everyone in the audience, as we are praying, will you just agree? God, Jesus says, if two or more agree on earth, it shall be done. Will you just agree that another 69 uh, can be vaccinated very soon? Um, and so we're just going to pray that God will guide and provide for groceries, for vaccines, for the, the church expenses to be covered um, and above all, for the salvation of those still far from God. Pastor, anything else before we pray? Yeah, as of now, uh, you have already covered uh, whatever I had in mind. So thank you for okay. being uh, so thoughtful and for your concern and yeah. your constant support. Thank well, you. It's my privilege and honor to represent everyone in the audience right now by just praying over you and over the ministry there in Pune. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this thank dear you. brother in Christ, this precious friend, and I thank you for your hand that is upon him. Uh, you have been even an ever-present help in time thank of need you. to pastor and to his wife, to I their family, you. and the birth of thank Theodore. You. And we and just give you praise for the way in which you are ministering to him and sustaining him and keeping him strong. Father, I just pray blessing over him, over his marriage, over his family, over the church family. And we just pray in the name of Jesus that you will provide, that you will guide. We lift up every expense, every need, every person under the care of their ministry that is hungry for food right now, every person that needs Bibles, every person that needs vaccines. And we just pray for your provision. In the name of Jesus, will you give? Will you provide? Will you, will you just meet every need? You say in your word that you shall supply all of our needs according to your riches in Christ Jesus. And so we ask you for that in faith and with high expectation that you're a good, good father. And we just continue to cry out for all the people in Pune and in the state of Maharista and all of India to know Jesus as Savior and Lord, that this would be a time of salvation, that people all across India would call upon the name of Jesus for salvation, and that the Holy Spirit would come and be an ever-present help and comfort them and help them and minister to every need. Father, let this be a time of revival. We'll give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you, my brother. I love you. I praise God for you. You are a hero to me personally and to Global Hope India. And we just will continue to pray and partner with you every way we can. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor Kevin. God bless you. God bless GHI and God bless everyone in the audience. Oh, 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 oh,
Thank you for listening to the Missions Change My Life show by Global Hope India with Kevin White. Find the complete archive of all episodes at kevinwhite.us or subscribe for free through your favorite podcast player and never miss an episode. This program is a copyright of Global Hope India. All rights reserved. Each week we bring you a message of how God uses missions to bring real and lasting change through Jesus Christ. Join Global Hope India again next week for Missions Change My Life with Kevin White. For missions Change My Life with Kevin White.